Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at contractionary monetary policy and understanding what it does. And that sounds all sophisticated and complicated, but really it can be explained in one slide. And if you've worked your way through these monetary policy slides and this understanding of what it means for the government to manipulate the money supply and therefore affect interest rates, then this is going to make sense to you quite quickly. Here we go. Okay. So, contractionary monetary policy, what is it assuming? Well, what it assumes is that the economy is producing beyond full level of employment, meaning inflation is undesirably high, unemployment is below its natural rate, and the economy is, what economists love to say, overheating. It's going too fast. It's growing too much. Things are too good. You got to slow it down. Okay. So what would that look like? Well, you, to know that, you got to go down over here to the long-run aggregate supply, lo, short-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand uh, curve or diagram, okay? So what this says up here is being displayed right here. Originally, the aggregate demand was here. As a result of the economy heating up, that all of a sudden, unemployment dropped below the natural rate, so from, say, 5% down to 2%. Um, uh, um, there's, there's inflationary pressure. Price levels have gone from P to P2. And of course, we're working beyond the full employment level. So this is not sustainable. In the short run, it is. But it would be better if the economy could slowly, slowly grow instead of expand and overheat. So therefore, the government is going to use the monetary tool that it has to contract the money supply. So what's it going to do? Well, there are, there are certain ways in which it can do it. But just in general, the, the government is going to say, hey, we need to have fewer dollars, if you're in the U.S., cruising around the economy. So we're going to contract the monetary policy, cut the supply of money. Simple supply and demand rules will show you that, hey, check it out. Interest rates will go up. If interest rates are up, and transfer this over to the loanable funds market. If you didn't see the expansionary monetary policy video where the loanable funds market was explained, the loanable funds market is really simple. This is the market for funds that you can loan, <laughs> that you can borrow. Okay, What's the price of loanable funds? The interest rate. How is the interest rate derived? From the money market uh, um, diagram. The, the government just cut sup the supply of money flowing through the economy from SM to SM1. What happened to interest rates? It went up. So therefore, what happened to the price of borrowing money? It went up from IR1, same interest rate, same price, to IR2. What's that going to do to the quantity of money cruising around or the, the quantity of loanable funds that are demanded that are out in the marketplace? It's going to decrease them. Well, what does that have to do with aggregate demand? Everything has to do with aggregate demand because as there's less investment happening, then what's going to happen? A decrease in the money supply will therefore raise interest rates. D that will lead to a decrease in the quantity of funds demanded, which will lead to a decrease in consumption and investment, which equals a decrease in aggregate demand back to a desirable level that is described right there. Dude, that is cool. Okay? So the government is focused on this graph and getting aggregate demand down here. But what do they do? They go to the money market. They contract the money supply through various ways, which we'll talk about in future videos. That raises the price of money, and that raises the price of a loan, which means there's less consumption and investment happening in the economy which leads to a decrease in aggregate demand back to where you want it, which is right here, where everything is at the full employment level, the unemployment is at its natural rate, and the economy is no longer overheating. And that, my friends, is pretty cool. If you got that in your head, you are loving monetary policy. It's super fascinating, and this is going on all of the time with central banks and governments as they monitor economies and you just got a window into an understanding that very very few people have so congratulations rock on continue through the monetary policy uh, videos it's super interesting this is real life stuff 
that will lead to a greater understanding of the world around you. All right, my friends, I hope this video was helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.